of everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That who so believeth on him should not perish, should not perish, but they shall have they shall have everlasting everlasting life God could have chosen to never love again fallen man could have gone his way and died in his sin but God in his compassion self our redemption paid the price so he took on the form of man and became the perfect sacrifice for God so gave his only begotten son that who this morning there's a word from the Lord 
it comes this morning from Galatians, Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians 2 and 20. I would that you would hold your Bibles open this morning. I'll be preaching from just that one verse. Galatians 2 and 20. When you find it, you'll signify by saying amen. Still looking, look at the screen. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Let us read that together this morning. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I want to use our thought this morning, living the resurrection. Living the resurrection. My brothers and sisters, as we look at this particular chapter in this book of Galatians, uh, we need to first understand this morning that Paul was there and Paul established a church there at Antioch. While then in Antioch in Galatia, uh, you need to understand this morning, Galatia was filled with a lot of Gentiles. Gentiles did not really know who Jesus was until Paul established the church there. After the church was established there, Paul had some problems trying to get them to fit into the Christian walk with God. But while Paul is there, some of the Galatians uh, had been practicing idolatry. They had been worshiping idol gods. And once they worship idol gods, they would bring their sacrifices to their idol god. And after they would bring their sacrifices to that idol god, they would come back and they would eat their sacrifices. This really was unheard of for the children of Israel. It was unheard of for the Jews to do that because they believe in Passover. There's, not only did they believe in Passover, but they also believed in kosher food. They believed what the Bible said, that you should not eat certain things. Uh, you were not supposed to eat uh, the clothing hooves. In other words, you're not supposed to eat any pork, uh, no beef. You're not supposed to eat any fish that did not have scales on it. But the uh, Gentiles did not believe in this. The Gentiles would eat pork, they would eat uh, steak, uh, they would eat all type of catfish, all types of fish without scales, and didn't think anything about it because that was the, how they were reared, how they were raised. So when Paul goes there and establishes the church there at Antioch, the Bible states that Paul understood what they were doing. Paul also was not a Christian uh, as long as some of the other disciples had been Christian. Paul was really never one of the disciples of Jesus. Pa uh, possibly Paul was there when they crucified Jesus. Paul was possibly there and saw them. He was on the uh, Pharisee council and he was one of the Pharisees. He possibly was one that was going along with the crowd when they crucified Jesus. But after the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, the Bible said Paul was uh, converted, knocked down on the Damascus Road. And once he was knocked down, Paul gets up and he begins to build churches. So here he is now. He has built a church. He's uh, established a church there at Antioch. And while he's there, he gets a visit from Brother Peter. Y'all do know Peter? Peter's that cutting, cussing Peter that will soon cut you as to cuss you out. He's that same Peter that said to Jesus, I will never deny you. He says, I will be with you all the way until the very end. But you do know the story of the Bible said while Jesus was going from courtroom to courtroom, while Jesus was being crucified, the Bible said, the Bible says that Peter denied Jesus. Are you listening to me? Denied him three times before the cock crowed. And my brothers and sisters, I think I need to tell you this morning, don't you ever put your trust in so-called friends. 
They will build you up today and let you down today. Somebody know what I'm talking about. But look at this thing here. While they were there, while they were there, Peter visits Paul. Once Peter visits Paul, he sees something unusual. He sees Paul eating with the Gentiles. Now, the, the Gentiles had pork roast on their table. They possibly had some pig ears on their table. Pig feet. Can I get some help? They possibly had some steak. All kinds of stuff was on their table. And here it is. Here it is. Paul is eating with the Gentiles. Peter understood. He didn't understand what's going on here. So what Peter does, he waits until everything is over. He looks on his table, and on the Jewish table, they always ate kosher food. Kosher food was nothing compared to that on the Gentile table. So while they were, while he was over on his kosher table, his table didn't look as appetizing as the Gentile's table. Are you listening to me? So he asked Paul. He says, "Paul, what are, what are you doing? You're over there eating with the Gentiles." While you're eating with the Gentiles, Paul says, don't you remember when Jesus came and died for the remissions of our sins, he said we can eat anything we want. All we got to do is ask God's blessings over it. If you pray on it, no deadly thing will harm you. You can tread over serpents and they will not hurt you. Can I get some help in this house? He says Jesus didn't come to do away with the old law, but he came to fulfill the law. And so when he does this, Peter recognizes, oh, okay, all right, that sounds pretty good. So what Peter does, Peter says, man, pass me a piece of that pork chop. And the Bible says, the Bible says that Peter was eating from the Gentiles table. And once Peter ate from the Gentiles table, he got a taste of some good ham that had been baked with a little honey on it. He got a taste of some pig ears. He got taste possibly of a, a, a nice pork roast. And so here it is. Peter was feeling that thing. All right, where the collard greens at, you know? He was feeling real good about that. And here it is. Peter is eating from the Gentiles' table. And now all of a sudden Peter leaves and he comes back. And when Peter comes back for dinner again, because they had something called a love feast. This love feast is when they would come and they would eat. It's almost like how we fellowship with one another. They came back for this love feast. And once they came back for the love feast, the Bible says they had the table set up for the Gentiles and the table set up for the Hebrews. Now notice here, all the great Jews, they came straight to that table because they didn't eat anything that they were not supposed to eat. Notice now, they're new Christians. They're Christians, but they, found, they, they bypassed that table and went over to their table. But look at this thing. Paul does this. Paul stops once again at the Gentiles' table. And he begins to eat. Now Peter has been eating at this table all this time when his friends weren't around. But as soon as his friends come, Peter goes over to the Gentile table and start eating the kosher food. Acting like he all that. Can I get some help? It reminds me of some of us. We'll go out and party with our friends all night long. We'll invite them to our house. We'll serve them all kind of strong drinks. And we'll do all the things that we used to. Can I get some help? But as soon as one of our little church going friends come. We're so holy. Oh, I just can't stand drunk folks. Oh, I can't stand. Oh, here they are. Oh, all this alcohol. Negro, you know you want your drink right now. But all of a sudden, you're so holy. Have you ever seen some folk? I, I know some folk, I ain't gonna call it a religion, but I know some folk, they go to church on Saturday. And some of them go to church on Saturday. They don't eat certain things. They don't eat pork either. Are you listening to me? And you got another certain group they don't eat any pork. But you, you, you get them rats behind closed doors. I've seen them eat up a hog from the rooter to the tutor. <laughs> now, I don't eat much pork because it's not because of my religious belief. I don't eat a whole lot of pork. It's because of my health reasons. 
Are you listening to me? But look at this thing. Here Peter is. Peter tried to act all that. So he goes over to his little kosher table and trying to act so holy than thou. He's sitting there eating his little kosher food, looking over there with one eye on that ham on the table. Well, so what happens is Paul rebukes him. Paul says, what are you trying to prove? Who are you trying to fool? He calls him a hypocrite. And you know what? I can't hardly stand hypocrite folk. Just be yourself. Tell your neighbor, be yourself. Let me tell you something. Everybody ain't saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, ain't drinking no liquor. Can I get some help in this house? All of us got to pray for something. Here you are, here you are. You got wine in your house. You got whatever else in your house. And all of a sudden, when I come to visit you, you cover it up. Oh, the preacher coming now. Here I am coming in the, in the convenience store and you standing in a lot of like, oh. You start looking for something else. I can't do nothing to you. Don't worry about me. Just be yourself. God can deal with our weaknesses. Do you hear me? I said God can deal with our weaknesses. He just can't stand you wickedness. He can't stand for you to be the wicked. Are you listening to me? God can do that. But don't be no hypocrite. Just be who you are. And when God sees that you're trying to do the very best that you can, God can take our weaknesses and he can make us stronger. A drug addict never can get any help until he admits within himself, I'm a drug addict. And you can never get help for your sins until you admit to yourself, I'm a sinner. I can't stop smoking on my own. I can't stop this thing. This, it's a nicotine thing. Every time I try to stop, I can smell smoke and ain't no smoke in the room. Can I get some help? I'm trying to stop drinking. I can, every time I try to stop drinking, I somehow or another that E&J is calling me. Am I preaching to somebody? That Cavassier, I just got a taste for it. It's just something about it. God can deal with our weaknesses when you admit it yourself. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says not what goes in a man that defiles the body, but it's what comes out of the man. A whole lot of y'all not drinking a thing. Don't drink Kool-Aid good, but you're so low down. You cuss folk out. You lie on folk. You talk about folk. Stab folk in the back. It's what comes out that defiles. Can I get some help in this house? Am I preaching to anybody this morning? So here it is, here it is, here it is. Paul says, you ain't nothing but a hypocrite, Peter. He says, by you being a hypocrite, I just want to let you know that you're a hypocrite. And when Peter realized, well, I am being hypocritical, he says, well, what about it, Paul? How are you doing this thing? Paul says in this one verse, Paul says here, he says in this verse, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I know, or which I now lives in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me my first point this morning we have a dead past living in the resurrection we have a dead past do y'all know that don't you let the devil hold nothing over your head you got a dead past all of us have been some in our lives but can I get some help but you have a dead past once you have confessed Christ and give your life to him you have a dead past you used to be a liar, but that, I'm a de that's dead now. You used to be a whoremonger, but that's dead now. You used to be a streetwalker, but that's dead now. Can I get some help? And folk looking at you right now, they're trying to hold that over your head. The devil is trying to hold that over your head, but looking at about three folks that know that used to be, I used to be, I used to be, I used to be. I have a dead past. Paul says, he says it in this verse, he says, I have been what? Crucified with Christ. Notice it says with Christ. I hear folks talking about I crucify myself daily. You can't crucify yourself. 
let me prove my point. You nail one hand. Who gonna nail the other hand? Are you listening to me? No, we are crucified with Christ. What are you saying? When Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, he died for us. He died for the remissions of our sins. And so we were also crucified with Christ. And Paul says, I have a dead past. He says, I persecuted the church, but that's a dead past. I held the coats while they stoned Stephen to death. That's a dead past. He says, I feel the least of the apostles because I persecuted the church. That's a dead past. Can I get some help in this house? All of us ought to have a dead past. If you don't have a dead past, it means you got a live past. Are you listening to me this morning? And sad as it may sound, you got a lot of folk in the church that's got a, a dead past, got a live past right now. You're sitting up in here, you ain't changed at all. You're still low down in sin. Are you listening to me this morning? My second point this morning, as I move to a close, my second point, we have a definite present. So Paul is saying here, he says, living the resurrection, I have a definite present. What is Paul saying? Look in this verse. It says, no longer I who live. It's no longer I who live. See, if I live in myself, I'm going to cuss you out when you make me mad. If I live within myself, if, if just me now, not without, without God, if I'm doing it without God, I'm really not living. I'm really existing, but I'm not living. And you got a lot of folk existing, but they're not living. They're walking, they're breathing, but they're not living. Their heart is beating 70 to 80 times a minute, but they're not living. They're only existing. Only when you accept Jesus in your life is when you are living. I heard him say, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We cannot live without living in Christ. Paul is saying, I was dead until I came to Jesus. But when I came to Jesus, now I'm living. He's living on the inside of me. Can I get some help in this house? Oh, look at Paul. Paul, Paul is one to tell us, Brother Robinson, because he, for, he forsook everything that he had. Paul was an educated man. Paul was a man that had a great seat on the Pharisee council. He was on the Pharisee council. He was able to tell other folk what to do, Brother McCain. He was able to, 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 to rule on other folk. And Brother Gilbert, what I like about Paul, Paul forgot about it. Yeah. Mr. Hyman, he forgot about yeah. that past. He didn't worry about what folks said about him. Yeah. Instead of Paul persecuting the church, Paul began to build churches. Yeah. Everybody was talking about Paul. Can't you see him? Yeah. Isn't this the Paul that, that, that persecuted the church? Yeah. Isn't this the Paul that put folk in jail? Yeah. Paul said, yes, I did it, but you know what? I have a definite present now. And my definite present is I'm going to build up churches. I've done enough wrong in my life, Paul says. So now it's time for me to do some good. Now if the truth was told on 90% of us in here, we've done enough bad in our past. And you ought to live the rest of your life trying to do some good. And you still won't get caught up for all the bad you did. Can I get some help? Look at your neighbor and say, try to do some good. My third point this morning, I ain't through, I got four points, don't worry. Don't get too excited. Got four points this morning. My, fourth, my third point this morning, we have a divine person. A divine person. And look at the word of Paul says. He says, but Christ lives in me. A divine person. I told you the first point, we have a dead past. Second point, we have a definite present. Third point, we have a divine person. And that divine person is Christ. Christ lives in us. Are you listening to me? He says, he says, he says, but Christ lives in me. See, that conjunction, that's a contravening conjunction, that but. That but changes everything from the beginning of the sentence to the very end of the sentence. That but, he says, but Christ lives in me. Are you listening to me? See, I'm no longer myself. I no longer am, I, 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 I'm, a, I, I'm a prisoner to the devil. I'm no longer stuck in the devil's pit. See, I'm no longer that because, but Christ lives in me. Anybody glad that Christ lives in you? 
Some of y'all will be real glad and that Christ is living in some of us. Because some of us used to be a mess. Can I, can I call the road? I got some club folk in here. I got some drunkards in here. I got some folk that used to be drug addicts. I got some folk in here that used to be some liars. I got some folk in here that used to take other folks' husbands. Other folk wives. Still doing it. But I got some folk in here this morning who's done some stuff. But aren't you glad? Now that Christ is living in you things. Old folk used to put it like this way. They said things I used to do. I don't have a desire to do them no more. Places I used to go. I don't want to go no more. Since Jesus came into my heart. Can I get some help in here? It ought to be about three folks in here that don't mind standing up and saying, I'm thankful. I ain't what I used to be. I ain't all that I should be. I ain't all that I could be. But I thank God I ain't what I used to be. Because Jesus lives in me. Can I get some help in this out? Do I have any club folk don't mind saying you in the club? I was there. If I was in the club, I wouldn't be here this morning. Because I'd still be in the bed sleep. Can I get some help in this out? Now don't y'all try to act like all, all that now. You may have not been in the club, but you were slipping and sliding, hitting. <laughs> Skinning and hiding. Are you listening to me this morning? But I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand this morning. We have a dead past, a definite present, a divine person. And my last point this morning is we have dynamic power. Now that's heavy right there. Dynamic power. We have dynamic power. Tell your neighbor dynamic power. What are you talking about, Reverend Dynamic Power? I told them about a sermon this morning. Uh, I told them about a show that I used to watch when I was a child. I used to look at this show on television that called Batman. Batman had a Batmobile. Batman had a Batcave. Batman had a sidekick that he called Robin. And they called one another the Dynamic Duel. Dynamic Duel. They were awesome, I tell you, but... Now, when I look at that thing, uh, uh, Brother Echoes, I think about I don't have a sidekick like uh, Batman had. See, I'm not really Batman, but I'm Robin. I'm the sidekick. Because the one that is my chief, his name is Jesus. And what I like about it, he don't have a Batcave. He don't have a Batmobile. But Brother Anderson... He's always on time. He don't have a cape to put on, but he'll always come to your rescue. And what I like about it, Sister Pace, his name is Jesus. You don't have to have a telephone. Can I get a witness? You can just go in your secret closet and call him up and tell him what you want can I get a witness well Reverend what you mean that is dynamic let me tell you this morning how dynamic he is he was wounded for my transgression he was bruised for my iniquity and the chastisement of his peace was upon him and by his stripes I'm healed is there anybody in here? Are you healed this morning by that dynamic power? I'm healed this morning when it gave me faith. You see, I walk by faith and not by sight. Is there anybody in here? Can I get a witness? I stop by to tell you I got dynamic power. So when you're trying to throw me a rock, when you're trying to knock me down, you better watch out. I got dynamic power because Jesus lives in me. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody in here that know God lives in you? 
Is it anybody in here? No God got power, not just any kind of power, but it got dynamic power. Yes, he does. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I'm living the resurrection because he got up. I'm up this morning. Can I get a witness? Do you know him? Have you tried him? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, he's been good to me. Neighbor, I didn't know how I'm going to make it. Neighbor, I've been lied on. Neighbor, I've been talked about. Neighbor, I've been down to my last time. But neighbor, look at me now. It's all because dynamic power. Yeah. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But if you've been there and not too ashamed, get up out of your seat, shake about five folks' hands, say, I thought I wasn't going to make it, but through it all, through it all, through it all, I'm learned to depend on the Lord. Through it all, I'm learned to trust in Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 do you know it? Oh, 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 do you know it? I said, have a child. I said, any, 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 You asked me this morning, why do I holler? You asked me this morning, why do I run around? Well, let me tell you, he's been good to me. Let me tell you what it brought me to. You asked me why I act crazy. Well, let me tell you, can I just tell you, just for a few minutes, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. I heard him say, weeping may endure. I've had some nights in my life. Anybody in here have to have some nights in your life? You ought to hug somebody. So I've had some nights in my life. But weeping may endure for a night. But shy, shy, shy. I said, joy come in the morning. Anybody looking for joy? Look at about five folks said, your joy is on the way. Your joy is on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. Somebody really need that joy. Somebody been looking for. If you know this morning, the joy will come. Look at the one more time. Say, it may not come when you want it to come, but it's always, always, always on time. Oh.